Welcome back to a Skewed Reviews, and this week we are continuing the Phantasm series, and today's film is the 1998 movie Phantasm IV Oblivion. Here is your trivia question for today. What band performs the song Have You Seen It for the end credits of this film? The answer will be at the end of this video. So this film starts off exactly where the last one left off. Mike is speeding off in the hearse, trying to get away from everything, but unfortunately, the tall man is still in his head. Reggie, however, is being trapped in a corner by a bunch of sentinels awaiting his own death. Surprisingly, the tall man just lets Reggie go as he does not consider him a threat. Also, the character of Tim from the last film is either captured or killed, assumedly from the way they left it on the last film, but he's never mentioned ever again. Mike is being forced to drive out into the middle of the desert by the tall man who has plans for Mike. It appears as though the tall man might be grooming Mike to become the next tall man. He even allows Mike to travel through gateways to see his past of when he was once Jebediah Morningside and when he actually became the tall man. Reggie, of course, spends his time searching each and every town to see if he can find Mike once again. Jody, the ghost who can age, continues to try and help both Reggie and Mike. At one point during his travels, Reggie makes friends with a woman named Jennifer, and there seems to be a possible connection there. But, of course, once again, it's not an actual woman, it's just a facade for the tall man, and this facade actually has two sentinels that are her breasts. So will Reggie be able to find and save Mike before the tall man has an opportunity to convince him to join his side? Or even will this time around Mike be able to save himself? For the fourth time in a row, Don Coscarelli is once again the writer and director for this film. He really wanted to go back to the original roots from where the first film came from. In fact, he did something very clever in my opinion. He took a lot of scenes that originally were edited or taken out of the first Phantasm movie and used them as a template for how he wrote the story for this film. That is the reason why so many of these scenes where you get these flashbacks, it's the original actors as how they looked in the first film. Now, the original idea of how to explain away Tim not being there at the opening is the movie was going to start with Tim being savagely eaten by lurkers. Unfortunately, the budget constraints caused them to not be able to do that. The role of Jennifer, played by Heidi Marnhount, was originally offered to Jennifer Bross, who happens to be A. Michael Baldwin's wife, and even had a small cameo in the last film as a nurse. She actually turned down the role, and I'm not too surprised, as how do you sell, so we're going to turn your boobs into sentinels. Some people may have been able to piece this next part together, some people might not have, but the old lady in the rocking chair that appears to be the wife, I'm assuming, of Jebediah Morningside, is supposed to be the fortune teller from the first Phantasm film. This next piece of trivia is gross but interesting. The stuntman Bob Ivey, who played the demon trooper in this film, drools into Reggie's mouth, and that scene had to be shot five times, mainly due to the fact that it kept not looking right. Now, before they settled on the version of Phantasm IV that we know nowadays, there were two original concepts that were dropped. The first one was going to be called either Phantasm's End or Phantasm 1999 AD. In this concept, it would have been in the far future of 2012, kind of like how some of the sequences look like they're a post-apocalyptic future in the fifth film. It would have been similar to that. Now, in this world, the tall man would have corrupted everything between New York and California and basically turned it into a wasteland. Now, just like some of the sequences in the fifth film, there would have been resistance fighters fighting against the tall man, and apparently Bruce Campbell would have been one of the main characters in this film. The other film would have had the possible title of either Phantasm Forever, Phantasm Forever in a different spelling, or Phantasm for Infinity. Now in this one, it would have been Mike waking up from yet another coma over some span of years and being treated by Dr. Morningside. They kind of went this way a little bit with Reggie in the fifth film. Now apparently, Gloria Lynn Henry would have been back as Rocky, and there was talks of bringing Ashley Lawrence from the Hellraiser series in as some other character. Also, one of the other ideas in this script was that they would be bringing back James LaGrosse's version of Mike from the second film, so there would have been some weird confrontation between two Mikes. So when it comes to the film Phantasm for Oblivion, I'm feeling the exact same way with this one as I have for the rest of the series. It's once again not 
much better and not much worse than the previous ones. So once again, I think I'm going to have to give this one a 3 out of 5. Now, as for the trivia question from the beginning of this video, what band performs the song Have You Seen It for the end credits of this film? The band is called Reggie B and the Jizz Whalin' Ya Doggies. First things first, yes, this is in fact the name of that band. Secondly, in case you were wondering or probably figured this out, this is in fact Reggie Bannister's own band that did the final song in the film. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Askewed Reviews. If there is a movie you'd like to see get a review, just mention it in the comments.